Hey, what's up guys? Today we'll be talking about the new iPhone 11. So Apple's best-selling phone from last year was the iPhone XR. It made up half of all iPhones sold in the States. This year, the XR got a relatively small upgrade to the 11, same design for the most part, same screen, same speakers, but the things they did change are pretty big and it's 50 bucks cheaper. So let's start with what they did change and then we'll go through the rest of the phone like usual. The biggest upgrade from the 10R would easily be the cameras. Hardware-wise, it's now running a second ultra-wide lens in addition to the standard wide-angle lens. The ultra-wide-angle lens is noticeably worse in quality to the standard wide-angle lens in terms of noise, white balance, detail, and low-light performance. So like, if I take the same photo with the standard and the wide-angle lens, there's a noticeable green tint on the ultra-wide. Now, Apple could fix the white balance in software, but for now, this is what I'm seeing. But the practicality and perspective you get with the ultra-wide is still awesome. It's great for tight spaces, architecture, like large buildings and statues, group photos, landscape. You could even use it for astrophotography with the new night mode. Now, unfortunately, I don't have any other phones on me to compare at the moment, like the Pixel 3 or the Note 10 or the S10. But there's a ton of other videos dedicated to the camera if you're interested, and just from these photos alone, it's really impressive. There's also software stabilization in video now that works alongside optical stabilization. It's almost like you're using a gimbal. Really impressive. And then there's 4K 60fps with the ultrawide and 1080p 240 fps with the selfie camera. And then there's a bunch of other small features like audio zoom, deep fusion, high key mono in portrait mode. They're cool, but not something that I see myself using all that often. The big changes are definitely the ultra wide angle lens, night mode, and improved video stabilization. I was also going to talk about the new A13 chip, but most of that is seen in the camera. So stuff like recording with multiple cameras, 4K 60fps video, 240fps slow motion, night mode, deep fusion, most of that is only possible with faster CPUs. But for normal use, the performance is literally identical to the two-year-old iPhone 10, which I've been running as my daily driver. They've also made huge energy efficiency improvements to the A13, so real-world battery life is noticeably better now. I'm getting a day and a half, maybe a little under two days of battery life, and on the iPhone 11 Pro, I'm getting 10 hours up from eight hours on the 10 XI and 10s. All relatively light use with high brightness. Really impressive stuff here. The screen is the same as the 10R, as far as I can tell. It's still an LCD display, same resolution, same brightness, same color accuracy, same thick bezels. It's quite underwhelming in 2019 with the Samsung made high refresh rate OLED displays with super thin bezels. Now to be clear, it's good, like it's bright enough for direct sunlight, colors are great. It's just that OLEDs have higher contrast and overall better image quality than an LCD display. Speakers are also unchanged. It's running stereo with a bottom plus earpiece setup. It's loud, detailed, good low end, no real complaints here. The build quality I'm sure all of you are familiar with, but one thing I did notice from the 10R is that the red color is a little bit lighter. The 10R had a deeper red, this is a lighter red. Other than that, the back frosted texture is inverted from the iPhone 11 Pro where the back is normal glass and the camera hump is frosted. My friends prefer the frosted texture, I prefer the bare glass for grip, but otherwise it remains the same as last year. Oh, and if you're curious about the frosted texture, I have not had any scratches, marks, or fading on my particular phone. Just something to note from the Pixel 3 if you're concerned, but time will tell. So for anyone who's looking to pick up an iPhone in particular for iOS or for the Apple ecosystem, or if you have 700 bucks and you want an excellent camera for both photo and video, this is a pretty good option. If you're debating between saving the 100 bucks and getting the 10R instead, it really just depends on whether you care about the camera. It is a huge upgrade, and for anyone who cares about the camera, I would say it's worth the 100 bucks. It just sucks that it doesn't have an OLED display, but the 10R was a pretty good phone and this is just a little bit better for $50 less. Okay, that is the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you guys next time.